Apple's not getting regulated because they're not popular enough. This hacking tool is now a video game console and NVIDIA wants to scan your entire PC and they're gonna AI the whole thing. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday. February 14th, 2024, AIDS Valentine's Day, also known as Kyler's two year anniversary. I'm dying. Ouch. All right, well, that's also maybe what Apple's saying over in the EU because it's been deemed that iMessage is not a dominant service over there, which was an investigation being done by the EU to see with the Digital Markets Act what services need to be regulated based on their popularity. They had some specific criteria in that you had to have a company that was getting at least 75 billion euros in market cap and then also had 45 million EU users every single month. And it turns out iMessage is not a core platform over there. It's just not a big deal. Very similarly to my time in South Africa, WhatsApp is a much bigger platform when it comes to messaging and iMessage does not allegedly have a foothold there. So they will not be getting regulated like some of the other messaging services like WhatsApp, as I mentioned, as well as things like Facebook Messenger, which are both owned by the same gosh dang company. But it turns out that Apple didn't get away with it entirely because there's 22 regulated services, which include Apple's App Store, Safari, and the iOS operating system. But the iMessage portion of that is not constituted because just not enough people use it over in the EU. Now, this likely isn't going to change a whole lot of plans that Apple announced when it comes to what they're going to be doing with iMessage because right at the filing date for all of this stuff over in the EU, Apple announced that they're going to be bringing RCS over. So it maybe felt like Apple like thought regulation was coming, but it's not, or maybe some other part of the regulation is gonna hit the iOS operating system, and so they need to have RCS support anyways. So it, it's, it's intriguing, but this really isn't likely to change a whole lot on the roadmap of what Apple was going to do. It just potentially can make trying to force them to do the right thing later on a little bit trickier when it comes to legislation for that because again iMessage is not a big deal and just like USB-C it appears like the EU is forcing all of these decisions that Apple's trying to do and if they're not scared of the EU anymore then maybe Apple's just going to continue to do what they want. Let me know what you think of iMessage not being a core platform important service over in the EU while well, I let you know about today's video sponsor. I'm calling out a large section of our UFD audience. The IT crowd. Not not the show because I have a very important message. Pulseway wants you to know that you can finally actually clock out. And also, they're today's video sponsor. This Valentine's Day is the last straw. You get off work, go home to get ready for your Valentine's dinner, and then bam, a system goes down. Now, instead of enjoying your date, your candlelight dinner has turned into a monitor lit meal. This could have all been avoided with Pulseway. Pulseway makes it easy to deal with IT issues by allowing you to respond and resolve through your phone. So now you can get back to doing what you love when you want to do it instead of dealing with IT emergencies. Pulseway lets you monitor everything you can think of, all from their convenient and easy to use dashboard. Check up on servers, deploy fixes to individual machines, review and fulfill reports all in one place, and from both your desktop and mobile. It's easy to add more devices so you can continue to manage and monitor wherever you go. To celebrate the holiday, Pulseway wants to share the love with you by sharing an exclusive offer. You can use the link in the description below to claim your free trial of Pulseway. Manage, monitor, and fix IT issues with love. Show some love to Pulseway with a big thank you for sponsoring today's video. Turns out Tesla's also got a little bit of a Valentine's Day surprise for one of their purchases of their vehicles because they've updated the yoke steering wheel to be way less stupid. Turns out that the new yoke steering wheel that they're implementing in the cars actually has a physical horn, which is not the way it was before. They got rid of the stocks. You have to press buttons on this stupid yoke steering wheel to activate the turn signals and everything else. It also was that you had to do that for the horn and that the center part was just an airbag and nothing more. They've updated it to where now you can hit the horn. It's a horn again. It's news because they it's it was dumb, but they fixed it. Thanks, Tesla, which I don't know how dumb this is, but Flipper Zero, one of the most popular little hacking tools that has all of the different gizmos and gadgets that you need to do a whole bunch of different things, actually is getting a new video game module that's gonna be powered by Raspberry Pi. This little device actually can run Doom and do a whole lot for you, including some motion control. So it's gonna have a gyroscope accelerometer, it's gonna have USB Type-C, it's gonna have a GPIO breakout so that you can control that separate from the Flipper Zero, and then additionally, it's gonna have video 
video out. And if you read their specifications on what type of video out, it's going to be a DVI-D signal that's going to be 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. But they can't say what type of port it is because there's copyright restrictions with HDMI, which we actually did a short on this, which you can check out right up there about how this is this is like a thing like the, the counterfeit HDMI cables is like all of the rage because HDMI really is just like a, a copyright protection more than anything. You can have all the same specifications, but you gotta pay to be certified. And it's a, it's a whole situation. But it's an intriguing piece of hardware that's gonna uh, unlock what the Flipper Zero can do. It's only gonna cost about 50 bucks. Looks like you could potentially use it like a, a friggin' Wiimote because it's got a six axis MEMS motion tracking sensor and you can use it as an air mouse to move things around. Just like I'm gonna move around this part to, to Reese in South Africa. Thanks for the deals, Reese and Prime Video has given everybody a worse deal when it comes to the videos because they are charging for ads. It's going to be $3 a month in order to actually get the non-ad version of Amazon Prime Video, but this is a known thing. Turns out that it's a little worse than that because it's now being found that Dolby Vision and Atmos support have also been cut from those who are not paying. This is not something Amazon publicly disclosed. It's just something that people are discovering as they're using the service. This is likely so that Amazon doesn't have to pay for Dolby licensing to the people who aren't paying them even more. But in case you're one of those people who feel like you are paying for it, you have a Prime subscription, what the heck is Amazon doing? Well, there's a new class action lawsuit against them for this very move, with the basis being that if you already have a Prime subscription with Amazon, you are in fact paying for it. So to, for them to charge you an additional price is them just screwing you. It's taking extra money for a service you already pay for. Let me know how you feel about that. And Windows 11 feels bad about older CPUs. They hate them. That's one of the reasons why you have to have uh, Ryzen second gen when you're trying to install Windows 11. Otherwise, it's unsupported. Turns out with the latest update that's going to be coming out later this year, they're getting rid of more CPUs but you don't have to worry at all because they're enabling a new necessary feature known as Population Counter or POP CNT, which is not supported on every CPU under the face of the sun. However, it is supported on the Nahalem CPUs and up and the K10 series CPUs on AMD side and up. So everything that you'd reasonably be running in 2024, additionally, every single CPU that's supported by Windows 11 is totally fine. But in case you're trying to do it without population count, they're gonna count you out of their population you're not allowed to win use Windows 11. But a new CPU that will be supported likely is the 14900KS. And now we're getting details about that. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be a chip. Oh man, the memes were already really bad about the 14th gen series, the 14900K. Oh, the KS is just another level. We're looking at 6.2 gigahertz turbo clock, 150 watt default TDP, which doesn't sound unreasonable until you look at the actual power draw. It looks like it's gonna be close to 410 watts, essentially a server CPU that you're trying to use in a client side device. It's gonna be brutal. So 410 watts is a lot. Uh, there's also some reports that it actually might might have a temperature above 100 degrees Celsius as like an officially supported temp. Might go to 105 to 110, somewhere in that region where Intel is saying, hey, yes, it's reasonable to run this hot. It's totally fine, which trying to cool 410 watts. My goodness, who's buying this? Who, who wants this? I don't. I don't quite know, but NVIDIA thinks a lot of people want more AI. We don't really talk about this too much in hot news, but NVIDIA did pass the market cap of both Google and Amazon recently. They came down a little bit, but they're they're flirting with being the fourth most valuable company in the US based on their market cap. It's absolutely insane this AI drive has been on their business. It has obviously revolutionized where they're actually making money, but the stock market's taking it to another level when it comes to predicting what they're gonna be able to do in the future. And what you're gonna be able to do on your PC right now is query every single file you have and ask an AI, hey, what's going on? That's because NVIDIA is bringing out their RTX chatbot where you can talk to your computer in a way that you would expect freaking Windows would be able to do. But if you have an RTX 30 or 40 series GPU, it now has a large language model that you can actually use on your PC to query everything and can bring up some data. According to different outlets that I've read, it seems very usable. It 
if you have a ton of files, if you've been using your computer for a while and you just want to get some details on other things that you have on your PC, this RTX chatbot can do it. But the weird thing is, it's just like, that's what I want Windows search to be. When I pull up friggin' Windows search, I want it to be able to query everything that I want it to. And I would want Copilot on Microsoft Windows to be able to do this exact same thing. But instead, what I get is something that sometimes searches the internet for what is clearly a local file or even a local executable. If I just installed a program and I'm trying to launch it, you're not gonna present to me the .exe at the first sign? What the heck? The fact that this is so usable for NVIDIA shows that there's a lot of work that needs to be done on Microsoft's side to get their operating system up to snuff, but it's a feature that NVIDIA is putting out there for free. You can check it out. No word on if AMD is going to support it and no real word on why the RTX 20 series isn't supported because NVIDIA seems to just kind of indicate that you need tensor cores, but the 20 series has that. There's something else going on behind the scenes. If you believed in them in their first generation, you get no support now. Thanks, NVIDIA. Good stuff there. And you guys got some good stuff in the comments yesterday, so let's check those out. We got Tony D saying, I'm 51 and still gaming, waiting patiently for the 2006 Battlefield 2142 remake to happen. Titan mode was the greatest gameplay in the history of FPS games. Not super into it, but I, I'm glad you're excited for the possibility of that ever happening. I also saw like a couple people call me out on my Need for Speed Underground 2, uh, saying that that was the greatest. Listen, I know that the debates between most wanted and Underground 2 for a lot of people, but then I saw people call me a youngin because I liked Underground 2. I've been playing Need for Speed since it was the, the first one one came out. I've had almost nearly every iteration of it besides the 2015 like remakes in the more recent years. Kyler, huh? what was the recent bad need for speed? Uh, unbound. Yeah, Unbound. I did not. Well, that one got better reviews. I think it was the one before that. I've been playing Need for Speed for a long time. And we got Farb saying, that's ludicrous. That was a, that's a good pun. The guy from the Super Bowl? The guy from the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was so excited when he showed up. I was like, it's ludicrous. I haven't seen him in years. I haven't, I haven't watched any of the, the I was going to say Final Fantasy, Fast and the Furious. Goodness. The Finnish Techie saying, I too have been to a Busisi's and loved it. The chopped brisket sandwiches were delectable. And then Vela saying, Busisi's? It's Busisi's. I know. I know how you're supposed to pronounce it but I have many friends in Texas and I just, I know that Texans take it way too seriously. So I intentionally just absolutely destroy it. I know like the, the joke pronunciation is boosies, but I took it a step further to make it clear that I'm like intentionally antagonizing you with my pronunciation of the, the beaver. Is that why they call it boosies? Then we got Wall saying, pronounce the K in breakfast. There's no K in breakfast. There's a, I'm saying breakfast, man. Did everybody's just harping on my intentional minst minst minstrel pronunciations. Not, I did not say menstruation. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News tomorrow. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Or don't, I don't, you know, do whatever.